nobody sees it. But you do it because it's important to do, and you do it because you've been given it as an opportunity by the Lord. And so when you keep that in perspective, then it doesn't, it doesn't matter what kind of recognition. It, it doesn't matter how important that other people in this world want to feel. What matters is that you feel like you're important to God, and you are important to God. He's given you that opportunity to serve him. What a privilege that is ours. I was telling Doug just before service started, you know, it's just wonderful to serve the Lord. It, it is. No matter what capacity, he says, ministry, let us wait on our ministering, or he that teacheth on teaching. He that exhorteth, that word exhort is not talking about the person that goes around and, and looks who's naughty and nice, okay? But that's, that's a word which really relates to encouragement. And there, there are people that you want to you you find on Sunday or Sunday night or Wednesday. You just want to see them one time because you've, you may be down when you come, but when you meet them, you won't be because they just have a way of picking you up. That's just who they are. And so <clears throat> it's important to keep your head correct in relation to the gifts that God has given to you. Secondly, it also relates to how you exercise those gifts and how you, you function in the church. Note what he writes in verse 9. He says, let love be without dissimulation. It's a big word. What does that mean? Without pretending. Not put on. I love you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You're so you're so nice. No. No, you you show it. You express it. You feel it. And he senses it. There's no pretense. No hypocrisy. It's real. You know, I, one, one of the things that people say to me who are lost and why there's such an adverse thing about church, people use this all the time. They're all just a bunch of hypocrites up there. Well, you know, they're really right. That's really a true statement because we all are but we sure ought to try not to be dating. Being real. Being what we are perceived to be in our love. How we express that to one another. So, love without dissimulation. Abhor that which is evil. Cleave to that which is good. In other words, we, we have the right perspective of what's right, of right and wrong. And we we hate, abhor means to be horrified with evil, wickedness, maliciousness, all of that that's in this world, that we hor are horrified by it. The sad thing is, is that we have Christians that are involved in it because they don't understand, they don't have the per right perspective of themselves, who they are, that they've been saved by the blood for the purpose of good works. Be a kindly affectioned one to another with brotherly love. That word is the word Philadelphia, the word brotherly love. And it relates to how you treat each other in ministry, in the church. In honor preferring one another. Now that can only happen if you get over yourself. For real. If it's all about you, then everybody else is going to the back of the line. Am I right? Yeah. You're not going to prefer anybody else. Because life has become about you. And, and God is not into that 
on his team. Church is not about me. Church is not about you. Church is about Jesus. And it's about treating people in honor, preferring one another, not selfish, sloth, not slothful in business. Um, Baptists don't always have the greatest rap as, as doing things the right way. Why I've, I've made this statement in our business meetings. We want to do. We, we're we're not a business, but we are to be businesslike. We're to do things classy, do things right, and if it's not right, we fix it. Now that's what we. That's what deacons were brought into the picture for. I, I, we're going through the Book of Acts in my Sunday school class right now. You know why deacons were chosen? Because there was an issue that came up with the widows of the, of the church. Go to Acts chapter 4, not now, but we'll go to Acts chapter 4 and you can read it later. The perspective and the, the understanding was that everybody had things common and everybody's needs were met as they had need. But something happened from chapter 4 to chapter 6, probably just because of the sheer size that the ministry grew to. Just by sheer numbers, it went from 120 to 3,000, to 5,000, to a multitude, probably more than likely there were tens of thousands of people now in the ministry. And the widows of the Greeks and the widows of the Hebrews were supposed to be having their needs met, and the, the, the Greeks were not getting their needs met like the Hebrews were. Probably was in ignorance, probably wasn't on purpose, but it was a problem. So what did they do? The disciples said, hey, guys, we, we don't have time for it. We can't do this. So they went to the congregation and they said, let's fix this. You choose seven men of honest report. These are the ones who became the, the deacons of the ministry to take off the burden, off the, 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 men of, the, the apostles who were ministering in the church from the ministry of the word and prayer. And they said, appoint them over this business. What business? The business of taking care of the widows what would be called widows indeed. Paul taught in one of his letters that widows indeed were widows who didn't have any family to take care of them. So what was the responsibility of the church? They took care of them. And so they fixed it. How'd they fix it? They chose seven men full of the Holy Ghost, of honest report, put them over the business, and the very next few verses says, and the, the, the word of God multiplied, and the numbers that were added to the church, the, the church multiplied greatly. It just kept going because they fixed it as they had need. And that's because they had the right spirit. They kept loving it all. They kept everything in it all the way it ought to be. Distributing to the necessity of saints, given to hospitality. Do you hear these the, these, this stuff comes from the heart. It's not trumped up. It's nothing that can happen. You and I aren't this way. We have to have God make us that way. Because the average person, after they're done with work, wants to go home and... <laughs> Am I right? Or lay there and watch the television. Hey, I feel like it too. And we all have those days. But if, if you have the right perspective of yourself and you understand that you are God's and, and everything that you have been given is God's and God has, wants you to be involved in people's lives, it, it changes your whole life. It changes what you want to do. It makes you... Forget the world's philosophy and forget all of their perspective that, man, it's all about the mighty dollar and it's all about who you know and it's all about what position that you have and it's all about how famous that you are and it's all about this life. For a Christian, it's not at, uh, at all about this life other than the people that you are reaching in this life. It's about the next life. He said, lay not up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust doth corrupt, and where thieves break through and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in what? In heaven. That's not here. You can only have that perspective if you keep 
yourself down here. And you put Jesus down here.